Hello, I'm Miss Kelly, the Twin Cities International School's Elementary Director, and I'm here today with Mr. Ismail, our new middle school director, and our friend, Cody the Camel. We are two weeks into our 2020-21 school year in a distance learning instructional model. We are off to a great start. I want to start out by saying thank you to our families and school staff for their patience and trust as we navigate through reopening during this COVID-19 pandemic. Our goal today is to give you some additional information on how we arrived at our decision for full-time distance learning and how we plan to move forward throughout the school year. We will also be reviewing the specifics of our distance learning plan. Our administrative team has been diligently working to keep up to date on all of the state health department and education department guidance for schools around COVID-19. As the COVID-19 coordinator for Twin Cities International Schools, I can tell you that guidance is updated weekly, if not daily, around educational practices and the health and safety by either the Minnesota Department of Health or the Minnesota Department of Education. Over the summer, we created reopening and operational plans for all three instructional models, in-person, hybrid, and distance learning. Once the governor announced the safe learning plan for school year 2021 at the end of July, we were able to evaluate which plan would offer the best educational scenario for our students, as well as considering the health and safety of our students, families, and school employees. While we had done some preliminary polls of families in early July that told us most families wanted to have their students come back to school in person as much as possible, that was not the case in early August. Parent requests for full-time distance learning exceeded over 50% of our student enrollment during the August parent request window. During this time, we also asked the Minnesota Department of Health if our 7th and 8th grade students could be considered part of the elementary students in the safe learning model parameters guidance. And we were told they would be required to follow the guidance for secondary students. We also collected information from our school employees on how many employees would be seeking accommodations to work from home and how others felt about in-person, hybrid, and distance learning options for delivering a quality, rigorous educational experience and concerns around health and safety. At the same time, other large public school districts in our community were announcing their plans to provide distance learning options only for the start of the 2021 school year. After a lot of consultation with all of our stakeholders, TCIS decided to offer a distance learning option to start the 2021 school year. The main reason, and most important, is that by offering distance learning for all students, everyone would receive direct instruction from a licensed teacher all day, every day. We were able to focus our planning and professional development toward creating a strong distance learning program with high expectations and rigorous academic content. We were also able to loan out more technology Chromebooks to offer a one-to-one -one device option for our students. In a different instructional model, hybrid or in-person, we would need those additional devices in school for part of that time. In addition, by starting in a distance learning plan, we could offer continuity for families to plan. We have learned that in any other scenario, a student may be excluded from school for illness or whole classes or grades may be put on a 14-day quarantine based on exposure at any given moment, leaving families scrambling to develop routines, find childcare, and a lack of materials and devices needed to continue their education. We were able to provide student material bags to each student, complete with all the tools needed for learning this fall because we were focused on one distance learning plan. We know that this may not be ideal and we want our students to be able to return to school. We are also aware that the county data has continued to get lower in the past few weeks, suggesting that we can consider other options. Our team continues to have those conversations weekly. However, we feel it is in the best interest of students and staff that we establish a solid distance learning program and that families have time to create routines at home for at least the first trimester of school. 
That would take us to the end of November. We will continue to monitor the COVID-19 county and city numbers weekly. If we feel we can return to school safely in a successful hybrid model before the end of the first trimester, we will survey our employees and families to make that transition happen. It is our goal to offer students live direct instruction daily for every subject area. If we were to switch to a hybrid model now, we would be shifting students to different teachers based on requests to stay in distance learning, staff requests to work from home accommodations, available technology devices, and several additional factors that we believe do not offer the best educational program for students. We are aware that some of the other schools in our area are offering hybrid models. However, we also know that not all hybrid programs offer full access to licensed teachers on the days that students are not in the building. We are constantly watching to see how the Minnesota Department of Health is handling positive 19 COVID cases and exposure in students and staff in these schools. Several schools in the state have already had positive COVID-19 case exposures or even positive cases in students as young as fourth grade. This has left families and schools scrambling to support distance learning during quarantine with little or no preparation or planning. That will not happen at TCIS. With our focused preparation, instructional model implementation, and student learning material and device distribution, we are confident and prepared for all scenarios. Allowing our students and staff adequate time to really get into the distance learning program and giving you, our families, time to create routines now, we are making sure we are all set for success in the future. Let's get into a few more specifics about distance learning. Please, please, please use the school's website as your first resource for finding out information about your student's schedule or distance learning program and our approach to health and safety during COVID-19. We are continuously updating and adding content and links from the Minnesota Department of Health and Department of Education for your reference. It is imperative that you review and know the screening information and pathway for the Minnesota Decision Tree for Children so you can make the best decision regarding health and safety for your family. <clears throat> The daily schedules for each teacher can be found on our school's website under the grade level links. There you will find specific information and specific schedules to online learning platforms like IXL and RAS Kids. Students should be live online at the start of each hour to the best of your family's ability. We know that you have things come up and that students cannot always be live but we want students to have a school experience during distance learning that is similar to the experience they would have if they were here at school. School hours for live teacher instruction, learning support and work time are 8 to 8.45 a.m., 9 to 9.45 a.m., 10 to 10.45 a.m., 12 to 12.45 p.m., and 1 to 1.45 p.m. It is very important that students attend class in the afternoon as well as the morning. Middle school students should try to follow their content hours on their schedules. For example, if a student has science third hour, then they should log on to the science teacher's class at 10 a.m. Elementary content schedules are posted on the grade level website. If your student is only logging in for live instruction in the morning, they may be missing key instructional content. For example, a second grade student schedules are the following. 8 a.m. specialists, art, PE, technology, or Arabic language. 9 o'clock reading. 10 o'clock writing and language arts. 12 o'clock math. And 1 o'clock science or social studies rotating by units. Students should use the 15 minute break between classes to take a bathroom break, get a snack, do some physical activity, and let their eyes take a break from the screen. Students should have their lunch break between 1045 and 12 o'clock p.m. A teacher may not require students to be live online for the whole 45 minute session, 
and may allow them to log off the Google Meet to complete their assignment. Students are only considered in attendance if they have submitted schoolwork each day, logged on to and participated in the Google Meet sessions, or you have communicated with the teacher if there are technology or other reasons why a student cannot be online. The teacher will let you know what alternative work can be done at home to count for their daily attendance. It is not enough to log on and say a quick hello or log on to Clever but not participate in the learning or complete any assignments for attendance. It is important to keep all the materials for each student in their assigned colored student material bag so they can easily access them when the teacher asks. Plan for a private space for each student to do their online work. We have also included headphones to help students focus and help minimize the noise around them. Again, we definitely want our students back in school, but right now it is more important to offer the students the best educational programming in the safest environment, which right now is the distance learning model. We appreciate all your support and want to remind you that our teachers, educational assistants, and school support staff are all here for you. We have technology support in the building daily. Teachers all have office hours each week to address your concerns and questions and meals will start being delivered to you beginning next week upon your request. Thank you for all of the positive and constructive feedback that you've been giving us over the past several weeks. If there are other suggestions for making our distance learning program even more successful, please reach out to the school's main phone line or email our administrators. We currently have over 95% of students logging into our live instruction on a daily basis. If we all work together, we can achieve more. Thank you again for your partnership with us this school year. Your support and teamwork is helping our students succeed. We're off to a great start to the school year.